Laura Montgomery, you're the costume designer for what we do in the shadows, uh, FX's comedy about vampires. Uh, since the characters originate from different eras before they became vampires, is, is you know, what, what's the sense of freedom, you know, like to be able to spend, to spend so much time in the wardrobes of, of these immortal beings? I think, I mean, I often say it's, I mean, it, what we do in the shadows really is a dream job. And thank you for having me on this panel today because I'm just so excited to be able to talk about it. Um, and what I love about it is that it's a period show and it's all the periods. <laughs> so the conceit from the beginning, even because the genesis of the show, it started with a movie. Uh, Taika Waititi and Jemaine Clement made this beautiful little movie in New Zealand. And the conceit that they started with initially was that much like humans, um, the vampires kind of all get stuck in the period in which they were kind of in their heyday, which for them is when they were human. So because they are of varying ages, um, the concept is that they're stuck in the period when they were human. So for our character of Nandor, that is the 1400s in kind of the region of Persia, formerly um, Persia, Iran. We have um, two characters who are like Victorian-esque, uh, Laszlo, who is British. And so we kind of center him in um, like a mid-Victorian silhouette. Nadia, who is his wife, is actually from a small island in Greece, uh, and she's much older, but we've kind of put her, because they're a married couple and they're always supposed to look um, like a matched pair, we've put her really, actually, really firmly in the 1890s so that we can do that amazing mutton leg sleeve, which wasn't around, it was around for like not even 10 years, um, but we just love doing a big sleeve on her. Um, and... But then the beauty of it all is that it's also a contemporary show. So we're not trapped in one particular period. So they have, they're rooted in this period and that's what the base of their costume is. But because they have been alive for hundreds of years, we can add in like, you know, a vintage uh, Lacroix piece on Nadia or something from the eighties. And they've picked up little bits and bobs along the way. Um, and so we're not trapped in one particular period. It's like influenced by the period, but then we can pull in, uh, elements from all it's all the periods I like to say um, and then you've got uh, Colin the energy vampire um, is it a unique experience as a costume designer to dress a character who is like by definition supposed to be deadly boring you know it's kind of a challenge with him um, it is and it isn't so in the first season of the show he was established as having a color palette of beige um, and I inherited the show from Amanda Neal, who is the costume designer from New Zealand, who had also done the movie. And it was funny in the office initially on the mood boards for all the characters, everyone had lots of pictures and references and Colin's um, mood board was just a square of beige. <laughs> um, so that was the, uh, that was the inspiration for him is that he's in a very, um, a very neutral, a very boring color palette. But then what really helped us with this year is that we found out how old he is. So in this season, um, he's celebrating his 100th birthday. So that allowed me to kind of walk back and figure out, okay, so when he was a young man, he would have been a young man in like, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And so before it had been a little bit, not all over the map, but we were using suits from the night. We were using suits from all the periods. And so now knowing how old he was, I was able to really look at um, kind of like mid early mid-century tailoring. And so I looked at um, a lot of kind of classic film reference and uh, the Duke of Windsor was a big influence for the types of patterns that he would wear and the cuts of the suits as well. So we went very like kind of Cary Grant, Duke of Windsor, those were his, his two big uh, inspirations. And so we, um, I really refine the tailoring for him this season to give him more of a to give him more of a specific point of view. Um, and you know, since these characters are creatures of the night, uh, of course, uh, like what what kind of considerations go into the costumes when considering the lighting and the cinematography and the sets? 
initially the show is a very dark show um, and we've kind of learned now we just finished shooting our fourth season which will be released in July um, but we've learned over the years you know although these are as you said creatures of the night and we want to keep them dark to keep it a bit gothic and also they hunt at night so it would be ridiculous for them to be walking around in neon because they wouldn't be inconspicuous they wouldn't be able to you know catch their victims but we've, I've really tried to find the balance between using darker colors and still being able to see the detail. Um, I think the, the house, the production design of the mansion does that in a beautiful way of keeping it dark that there's so much like pattern and texture and there's just enough um, brightness to kind of be able to see all the detail. So I tried to lift the palette to more of a mid-tone range, keeping it in the, you know, the really rich jewel tones but I find, especially with the way that the show is lit to keep it moody, um, details can get lost. So I tried to, you know, push the color a little bit more, um, make it rich, but try to um, use, there's a lot of shine and a lot of texture, metallics, um, going to the burgundies, the purples, the teals that, you know, to the eye might look really bright, but then as soon as you get it in the mansion, it's like, okay, well, that looks almost black, so great, <laughs> uh, but you can still read it a little bit. Um, so keeping it dark, but having it, um, having enough reflection and light and mid-tone colors to get some, to get some depth. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite pop culture vampires throughout the years from a costuming perspective that that you that are so iconic that you know, it's like you see that wardrobe it's like that's who that is great question i have a lot of favorites um lost boys was a big one the you know keeper sutherland and his gang of really you know sexy and scary vampires <laughs> um of course the vampires in buffy but for me, like I often say, it just it, like it all comes back to Aiko. That Bram Stoker's Dracula, Aiko Ishioka, everything that she did in that movie, I think is perfect. Um, from his like blood rivuleted armor and the wedding costume that is um, a reference to the Klimt portrait. I just think, and then all the period costumes that she does for that movie, it's it's perfect and we often, you know, if I can just use, I use that as my kind of guiding light. Um, and you mentioned having like references for, uh, you know, uh, uh, Colin, like uh, Cary Grant and, and Duke of Windsor. Do you have similar like specific historical references for like Nadia, Laszlo and, and Nandor that you kind of, you know, circle back to? For Nandor, um... I tried to bring his silhouettes and to get more um, Eastern inspiration, I would say for him and really home in on the place where he was from. And so for that, the source reference at that point is all painting and portraiture. Um, there are some illustrated poems. And so it was a lot of looking at paintings, going to museums. Uh, there were shawls from the period. It's not, I mean, it's mostly just like royalty and shows, which he was at the time. So a lot of portraiture um, for Laszlo. He's such a rock, like, it's funny because as you get to know the actors and you're developing the characters and now that, you know, we have four seasons of the show under our belts, it's inevitable that the actor's personalities kind of sneak in there as well. So Matt Berry, he is a bona fide rock star. Um, and so it's hard to avoid getting a bit of that rock and roll influence for him. So even though, you know, he's our Victorian guy, but there's a lot of Nick Cave in there with him. There's a lot of Bowie, um, I, you know, that's kind of, we're moving in that direction. I think he's just so cool. Um, and then for Nadia, there isn't a lot of, again, her influences are a little bit more modern. So it's modern fashion, and then it's that kind of like big blown out 80s um, La Croix. Natasha likes to reference, you know, if, if it's something that one of her Greek aunts would have worn in the 80s, she's like, yes, this is like, this is perfect. This is the right note. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, congratulations on your work on the show uh, and looking forward to season four when that, uh, when that drops. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for talking to me about it. Thank you.